Whoa. This is nice. Look how light this hair is. Oh my goodness. Hello, hair bestie. How are you? I'm here with my client, Mel. Hi. We gotta turn around so we gotta see how long your hair's gotten. And this is almost two years. Yes, almost the, two years. The hair still looks good. The color still looks good. Yeah. Today, yes. we are gonna do something different. No Don't ever. get scared, <laughs> but we're definitely gonna frame the face. I think less is more now. And now we're simplifying it. Okay, okay. Sometimes all you need is 20 or 16 foils okay. and boom, wow. that's it. Let's get started, <laughs> <Okay>. come on. <laughs> So let's take a look at her natural level. So this is the new level finder in the new swatch book of Guy Tang My Dandy. When you put the swatch level finder next to Mel's hair, you can see in the back, she is a natural level three. Up here, this is all her natural that's grown out. And as you turn her to the side here, in the front of her hair, she's a natural level four. So her hair transition and it gets lighter around the face frame and that's very normal. Most of us have lighter hair by one level in the front of our face frame. So that tells us a lot about how we formulate. We can either start in the back first where it's darker and then in the front where it's lighter or switch up our volume developer strength of power. So sometimes I'll do 10 volume in the front, 20 volume in the back or 20 in the front and 30 in the back. Always amp up the developer power in the back because it's always darker in the back so you're going to need more power and the hair around the face is always finer. When you look here you can see that two years of growth is about this much down to her shoulders and what you're seeing is her old highlights underneath is slightly darker. How much hair are we going to cut off of you today? I don't know how much are you going to cut off? How much do you want me to cut off? I could literally cut it in half. I have no... Like this? Yeah it's fine if you want to cut half. Past your nipples? I don't know about past. Maybe like right at or below. But at the nipple or below the nipple? It depends how so, much you so want. So here? I'm okay with cutting a lot off. That's a lot. That's you. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So we're going to cut straight across here. Girl, your hair is thick. These are new sharp shears is and it? scissors. Yeah, oh. man, it's having a tough time cutting through. <laughs> oh, it's gone. Yay! How exciting. Oh my gosh. I know. It's blonde. Yeah. I All right, let's it. even out your cut, then we'll okay. get started with the color. So I normally use Big Nine when dealing with dark hair and trying to get the hair as light as possible to a level 10 because Mel naturally has a level three to four. I'm gonna use Magnum 8 because I'm not trying to make the hair white. So if you have not used Magnum 8, you need to. Everyone loves Magnum 8. Magnum 8 has like the perfect spreadability. It has a lavender tone to it. It's gorgeous. I'm gonna do about 50 grams and my favorite mixing ratio is one to two. The spreadability of the product is unbelievable. And then now I'm going to use 40 volume. I know 40 volume can sound kind of scary, but obviously we're not putting this on scalp. We're ombre the hair and doing face frames. So throughout the back, I'm going to do 40 volume because she needs that power because it's not near the scalp, it's off the scalp. So everything that's down here is considered the cold shaft. So that would mean I'll need 100 grams of developer. Now measuring is very important. So make sure you always measure because if you don't measure, you can shift the alkalinity of the product which can affect the lift. So you're gonna whisk it up. I'm gonna stir up the Magnum 8 with the 40 volume developer. Always use the dedicated developer because you're gonna get the promised consistency to the product every single time. So now we're gonna add the Guy Tang Collagen Powder. So less is more, her hair is healthy and I wanna get as much lift as possible. So you only need less than the quarter scoop. The collagen powder ensures the hair is protected while you're lifting. Because a lot of damage can occur as you lift hair with any product, any lightener, anytime you're lightening the hair, you want to make sure you protect it. Your best friend's going to be the Guy Tang My Thick Body Texturizing Spray when backcombing because Mel has very healthy, shiny hair. It's so slippery that you can't even backcomb it. So when I spray the hair first before doing a backcombing technique, it stays. So I'm sectioning her hair, spraying it, and it will not affect the lift. It just gives me a little texture to work with. So when I backcomb, everything will stay put. I'm going to divide her hair in half because I don't want to 
you try to put too much hair inside. So starting on the left side, you'll see, take a thin section here. So take a look. You can see how her hair gets finer as it reaches the bottom. It's more denser up here. That's normal, especially with hair down in the nape area. There's more density where the base is. As it gets down, it gets finer. What you want to highlight is the length, not the short pieces. Because if you highlight the short pieces, you're going to draw attention to it and it's going to appear like breakage because those hair are shorter to the eye. Never draw attention to short pieces. I'm going to comb the hair down. With one hand, you want to hold on to the length. So that way all the length doesn't get pushed back. But when you back comb the hair, you're literally pushing back all the short pieces. So for maximum diffusion, I lift the hair all the way up and go from underneath, push the hair back and then bring the hair back down and push the hair up. Now you're creating this huge cushion and make sure you don't bring the highlight way, way too high up to the base. You want to bring it about here so that way it looks like an ombre. So what we're doing is ombre the nape. Here is a foil. I'm going to lay it on the board and I'm going to dip into the Magnum 8 lightener. I'm going to paint it right on the foil. So there's something for the hair to adhere to so I don't have to work so hard with penetrating the hair underneath. So lay the foil down the hair right over the top. So now the bottom is already penetrated and then I get my brush with the Magnum 8 and just paint from the bottom first so all of your product is concentrated right on the ends where you want it to. And then with the minimum amount of product you still have on your brush, you tilt the brush into a vertical position and feather up creating almost like a W shaped pattern. So that way you get to penetrate all the way through and notice I'm staying away from that base so that way you get all the concentration of the lightener on the ends to create an ombre effect. So now you do a foil overlay. Boom. And then you just work your way up to the top. So make sure you take a thin section, not too thick. Clip this up out the way. And again, hold on to the length right here. Lift the hair up. You see right here with the comb, create that diffusion. And again, push it up. Look how fine that section is right in through here. All right, so in the back of her nape, you can see I'm done with all eight foils. It's one, two, three, four on one side and four on this other side. So a total of eight all together, all in the nape area. So I want you to see how cool this is. So you get to turn the board and wheel the board out in a way. Everything is foiled, done. So let's drop this down. So I'm going to leave this out and you can see where she has her old highlights that have now become an ombre. I'm only going to do four foils on each side here so that way it connects all the way through. So there's a connection but there's still some low lights in there. So I want you to see what's going on here because I still have my 40 volume bowl here and I don't have to mix another 30 for around the face frame. I'm gonna skip the face frame and do that last. So I go from the back of the ear into the point of where her money piece is gonna be because I don't want it to be too chunky around her face frame. I want it to look natural. So I go into that point and I can see this is how much I wanna leave out or not. I say, okay, this might be too thin. I want a bigger piece. So then I go right through here and I go right back in again and go, okay, that's much more like it. So this is gonna be the money piece I'm gonna hit. So now what I did was I go right behind that money piece and dissect that right across and leave about an inch out. So this is where I'm gonna do my first first foil for the back section with the 40 volume because the face frame I'm gonna hit it with 30 volume because the hair here is a lot lighter and it's finer. So first I'm gonna spray her hair with Guy Tang My Thick Body. So when you highlight this, what you don't wanna do is get all the way up to the top of her parting because when she tilts her head down here, you can see this is where her parting is. You don't want the foil to be right here because what's gonna happen is you're gonna be able to see a stitch mark and it's not gonna blend. You want the highlights to almost internally pop out. So you wanna stay an inch away from her parting. So you can go right from here in the nape go all the way up here, leave out that inch at the top. Now, make sure you take a thin slice because if it's too thick, it's not gonna penetrate all the way through. But you're gonna hold the hair out, back comb the hair, and direct the hair back down, and back comb right from the center here. So now you get to go up higher. So at this point, you get to go all the way up as high as you can. So get your foil board here. I'm gonna grab the foil, the color side underneath, and you're gonna fold that last quarter inch over that board. So you get 
get to tuck the hair right there. So if you want to get as close as possible to the scalp, what I do is get your comb and then tuck all the back comb right behind that board, just like so, and gently hold. And this is where you're gonna paint your lightener on. So I'm gonna start in the center, but notice how the board help anchor the comb back. So that way you get as close as possible to the scalp without any bleeding because now everything is clearly tucked away and you can get up as high as possible. That's really, really cool to me. Now you get to untuck the hair because you already got all the lightener onto the hair that you want. Remove that back comb and you're good to go. And I repeat until I do four foils on this side and four foils on the other side. And you could feather out the ends if you need to or bring them on in. It all depends on what you're trying to achieve here. In many cases, sometimes our ends have low lights, highlights, base color because of previous ombres. What I like to do is to make sure it blends. I go in with the rat tail part and pick out the dark pieces so I don't overlap the parts that are already blonde. So you can see right there, this part's already blonde enough. I don't want to overlap that. So I just bring this right on up. So remember, because of the back of the flap, I get to lay the board back down and apply the lightener right on that piece so that way it all connects and blend down so you don't have like any breakage right down through here. So I just got done foiling all the back part of the head. We did four foils on one side, four foils on the other side, and then we got the ombre part in the back. So now we're hitting the money piece face frame. So this is the top section. This is where you see that big face framing piece. I'm going to clip that up and out the way. And you want to work the parietal area first. So I'm going to do a parting parallel to that section you can see here. I am going to do about three to four foils back to back till it hits this area and leave this piece out. So I already spray her hair, the guy tang my thick body, just so as she work through the section, it's gonna be a lot more easier to back comb all the way through. All right, so hold this section and over direct it to the front, and of course, back comb it straight up to the scalp edge, so you can get that money piece really close up to frame her face. So get your foil board and fold the foil over and anchor the foil board end. So you can see that there's a little cushion of a back comb here. So again, if you wanna get your comb and tuck nicely right behind that board. This is the cool thing about having the foil board here is that you could anchor right behind and then paint right through the center, just like so. And remember, you hold the hair like this. Don't pinch it together and rope, but just kind of make sure it's spread. Get your middle finger to hold the board right in the back and then paint, just like so. And you're able to get really close up to the routage, the scalp this way, because the comb is anchored right behind the board. And that's the cool thing about using a full board that you can't do during freehand back combing and then bring your finger down and then spread the product right down the cool thing is having a board gives you that pressure and also it looks a lot more neat and more professional in the salon when your clients see you do this because it's not something they can mimic at home themselves and it makes things look a lot more neat and more professional so now you can get that comb out and then you can swirl the ends up and bring that right on through and paint that and there you have it and now you do a foil overlay and I repeat I'm just go ahead and overlay the foil right on over the top and then do another section and repeat and repeat until I do about four back-to-back -back foils Maybe we could recreate the memories. If you want in, just let me know. so now we're down to the last section for hair this is the money piece this is very important so I did mix 30 volume for all the face frame because remember the hair is one level lighter it's also more finer around here so I want to show you as I lift her hair up notice she has all these little short hairs these baby hairs do not need to be highlighted I know a lot of folks say you gotta highlight all the, the little tiny pieces and that's great when it's on level eight and nine natural hair but when you're dealing with someone who's Asian what happens is it looks like breakage and not only that but you wash out the person's skin tone because now their face blend in with their short hair so it looks like their forehead is either bigger or they have breakage around. You want to make sure you leave this as a shadow. Leave these little guys out. So how I do that usually is I'll shake the hair. When you shake the hair, you'll see these little short pieces come out. Let them hang out. You do not need to bring them in. So when you back comb, all of these short pieces will come out furthermore. I'm going to do about three to four back to back foils and that's all you need. And at the end, we're going to shadow root it back down. So again, I'm going to go into a V section here 
and this is what we're going to highlight. So leave this out and you can see how just in between here, look at that short hair she has. Do not highlight that please. It's not going to look right. So just highlight right around. So you're going to have to do a highlight here and a highlight here because obviously she has natural short hairs. So I'm going to back home this. That's what we're going to highlight. Over direct this and back home that and that's it. So now let's go ahead and bring this in. Now this is going to be an interesting section because all the short hair is hanging out. Get your board out. Repeat the same thing through here and again lift the hair up. This is going to be different. Make sure you spread the hair out. So you see there's a gap here because this is around her face frame and everyone's hairline is different. So you have to navigate everyone's hair slightly different. So I want to get in close as much as possible. Obviously tucking the comb behind so I could create a nice anchorage here with the application and a nice blend. Me and Mel have a very interesting conversation. Mel, what was your question? At first I asked you what makes you the most happy. And then reflecting on what we talked about, it's just being able to do what you do on your own time. Cause you can never get time back. You can always make more money, but what are you losing? You're losing your time. So I think that's what the main gist of our conversation was. Just how we're at first work smarter not harder by being able to save time because you can never get time back like, no you can't no. <laughs> okay through quarantine i have discovered that i have been working very very hard for the last five years i've been traveling and touring the world non-stop not taking a break not taking any time for myself of course i felt obligated to say yes to everything and i never said no because i don't want to fail i work really hard for everything and talking to mel you know one thing i realized is that you can always make more money but you can't can't make more time. My dog passed, Mimi passed away during quarantine, my grandma passed away, and I realized I didn't spend that much time with my family or Mimi, my dog, or my husband. All I did was work because I felt like I had to work. You realize when you have enough, like you're good. You're good with where you are in life mm -hmm. and you're happy. Happiness <laughs> yeah. doesn't equate to all these things that we think that are materialistic. Mm -hmm. What's on social media? You should be happy where you are. Mm -hmm. If you're not happy where you are, are, you're not going to be happy where you will be and I know a lot of us out there I know you probably experienced this too it's very important that it's okay to say no mm -hmm. it's okay to think about yourself first a lot of people say oh stop being selfish think about other people but the thing is how can you think about other people if you don't think about yourself first you have to take care of yourself first before mm -hmm. you can take care of other people because you can't pour out of an empty vessel mm -hmm. I mean they tell you this when you get on the plane put your seatbelt on first before you try to put seatbelts on others mm -hmm. right and that's important because because if you're not secure, you can't make other people feel secure. You have to set an example for yourself. You have to take care of yourself before you try to take care of others. And that's the one thing I learned the most throughout quarantine is that if I am not happy, I'm going to be miserable and mm -hmm. then it's going to infect everyone around yeah. me. Yeah, you definitely are a lot more happier now. That you noticed you, that too, yeah, right? Yeah, even like before, I'm like, oh no, what happened to you? But now like you're at peace with yourself, you're loving what you're doing, you exude happiness and that just spreads around the room. Like, if someone's happy, everyone's gonna be happy. So I'm here and down to my last section. Oh my goodness. And we are done. We're gonna process her for 45 minutes and boom. So <laughs> we're processing Mel's hair right now and we have a very interesting tradition, right? Every time yes. you come see me. I bring you something. She always brings me. Because I know that we barely have time to eat. Mm. So I bring snacks for us to eat. <laughs> a lot of snacks. Like yeah. You brought like cupcakes, cupcakes donuts, candy, fruit roll ups. Yeah, fruit rolls for gushers, bags of like like just random chips yeah. and candy and all types of stuff. Yes. So what you got for us okay. today? So I brought different types of chips and then I'm gonna do something healthy, some cuties. <laughs> this is healthy. <laughs> Oranges. Some they're really small. Yeah, they're they're small ones, they're cuties. Oh, they're extra sour? No, they're really sweet actually. Oh thank you. <laughs> and then this is just a bunch of random snacks that I had. So Oh, um, Oreo? Oreos. I have the Harry Potter jelly beans if you want to do that challenge. <laughs> Harry, Harry Potter, oh, this is a challenge? For it's this? where some of them are bad flavors, um, but they look like good flavors. Oreo. So you have to hopefully get the good ones. Skittles? These are shockers. Oh, oh, sweet tarts. Oh Sweet's my god. Sour <gasps> you. Chocolates. I remember Throwback. this. Yeah. Throwback. These from are my, my favorite. But the stick isn't there anymore. They don't put the stick. This was like lunchbox food that I My used to favorite. have. You said throwback. They make an Oreo version? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Oh. Chocolates, different kinds of Oreos. Chocolate, Oreo. Chocolate, yep. We got the gold, golden Oreo. Yes. yes. 
Are those healthier? I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to know. be healthy. Then, okay. Mm, the chips. Okay. The chips. And then this is a healthy one. Turkey jerky. Turkey jerky. Yes. yes. It's, it's teriyaki. 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 Turkey turkey. Girl. <laughs> You see what I mean? Every time. We have to keep ourselves full. Okay, and then this one's this one's the worst one, but it's the best one. Girl, what did what you bring? Oh, okay, let's open this. We gotta open it. I don't know it. the flavors. I don't remember the flavors. You don't know what flavors. <laughs> but most of them are like chocolate, because I know you like chocolate. I do love chocolate. Um, and some of them are Filipino flavors too. Um, I think this is ube. Ube? Oh, um, I thought that was taro. Um, I think this is honey lemon calamansi, um, chocolate, some sort of chocolate, cookies and cream, turon, and ferrero rocher. I'm pretty sure that's chocolate. <laughs> Mm. It's chocolate, okay. right? It's yeah. chocolate. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I think it's healthy. <laughs> what do you think? I think it's delicious. Oh. I think you should shove that whole mm. thing. <laughs> I want I want you to try it too. Here. <laughs> mm. Here, have a bite. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna eat this while we're processing her hair. So we got another 30 minutes and you'll be done. And we'll come back and we're gonna glaze her hair down. All right, so it's been 45 minutes of processing. Let's spin her around. And we're gonna pull out. This is my favorite part. So let's undo these clips because I wanna see what everything looks like underneath these foils. Now keep in mind, we did 40 volume in the back and 30 volume around the face frame. It should be all even because remember what I told you, the hair in the back and the outside is away from the body heat and and of course the face frame, the hair is finer there and naturally lighter. So it should all live pretty evenly. <gasps> Magnum 8, look at this. Look at that lift. Oh my gosh. Whoa, that's like lighter than the level nine. <laughs> it's like level nine and a half, so that's good. Whoa, this is nice. Look how light this hair is. Oh my goodness. This is so satisfying, especially when you put in all that hard work and to see the lift lift so evenly. Look, notice how the 30 volume is really, really light too, just like the 40 volume in the back. And then we're ready to rinse out and you can pre-tone and glaze, it's all up to you. So you can see that Mel's hair lifted to a level nine. It looks very beautiful around her face, all over the place. But what I wanna do is pre-tone her. So I'm gonna choose Misty Moth. This is the Guy Tang My Dandy Express Toner. It tones the hair in five minutes. You can leave it on longer if you want to. The longer you leave it on, the more color deposition you're gonna get. So usually it ends at 25 minutes. You can get the swatch page here um, on MyDandyColor.com. So you can see that there's Eclipse, Titanium, Pearl, Misty Moth, Blush, Golden Sand, and Sandstorm. I'm choosing Misty Mauve here. So you can see Misty Mauve is a violet base. There's a gray mauve tone. So that violet cancels out a lot of the yellow in the hair. And that little bit of that red from the mauve gives you that beige reflection. So remember, Violet red, you get a smoky beige reflection. So I mix it one to two ratio, six volume. I'm just gonna massage it throughout her whole head. And this is gonna tone away a lot of the yellow, bring it down. So I'm massaging the Express Toner throughout all of her highlights and her hair. It will not shift the base because it's acidic. Make sure you get it on there quick and fast. Just like that, we don't wanna waste any time. Just massage it on in. You don't have to pre-tone the hair, but I choose to pre-tone the hair for many reasons because when you're working with Asian hair, our biggest fear is brassiness. Our hair being naturally dark, it likes to revert itself back to being warm pretty quickly on its own. And so having more pigment just ensures that it lasts longer and control all of the brassy tones. And that's it, and we'll be back. All right, so we are back and take a look at Mel's hair. The highlights are gorgeous. We pre-tone with Misty Moth. So remember, Misty Moth has that violet, red, gray background. So it ashed out her highlight it mutes it down so it gives it more of a controlled look. You can see all the dimension through here. We can pretty much stop now and it'll be beautiful, but take a look. Here's her money piece. It looks gorgeous, but I always want to finish it and finesse the product and make sure it's melted down so the color lasts for months to come because I don't see her for like two years. A year, years. Yeah. <laughs> a year, to a two. year hopefully. Hopefully a year, a year this hopefully time. A year this time. <laughs> but when you layer color on color, just like base coat, top coat, the same type of concept, you create more dimension, more tone 
tone. So especially for clients you don't see quite often, it makes a huge difference, especially on Asian hair, being that it has to be lifted so high to bring back down, we have to override the red so the highlights look more muted. Where if someone's naturally born a five or six or seven, you don't have to deal with red undertones like Asian hair has to. So that's why we lift past an eight, nine, 10 to mute it so there is no brass. So now I'm gonna go in with seven BB, nine BB. So we're gonna do seven BB, demi, nine BB on the ends, demi. So it kind of ombres itself down. BB has a mauve beige type of background to it. So because it has a little bit of that cool gray mauve, it kind of correlates with the misty mauve. It's in the same family. And the cool thing about the BB series is that it leans on the cool side. I feel like a lot of beige series can be brassy, but in the Guy Tang Identity collection is very cool tone because the hair naturally has warmth in it already. So when you're glazing or coloring the hair, you have to control the warmth, not enhance it. Not only control, but work with what's there so you get the color you want without adding any more warmth to the hair that's already there. So you can see here, I'm applying this right on base and it's not gonna shift her base because it's our demi color. When you mix it one to two ratio, it's acidic. So always remember to mix it one to two ratio. And the thing is, even though I pre-tone her hair all over, I pre-tone with one color. You can see right here that there is some stitch marks from the highlights. Remember, we only did 26 foils. Only 26 foils, but look at those highlights. Look how beautiful they are. Because I placed them in a way where it's in an angle that you don't see it, so when it's laid down, it's all blended right through here. You don't see the stitch marks. But when you open the hair up, now you can definitely see it and dissect it at different horizontal positions. This is where shadow rooting the hair will help blend it in. And I know you are seeing me apply to dry hair, so when do we tone hair wet and when do we tone hair dry? That's the question. When you're dealing with hair that you want to retain a lot of brightness and have sheer color deposit, you could tone it on damp hair. But when you're dealing with hair like Mel, where she is Asian and her hair is naturally dark and naturally has a lot of warm underlying pigments that will reoccur, I want to apply to dry hair so she gets maximum color deposit and maximum longevity. I think that's where a lot of us get confused. Like, when do we apply dry? When do we apply wet? Anytime you apply color dry, you have more color absorption. Remember, anything that you add water to, you're diluting the pigment. It's like adding water to your Kool-Aid. So anyway, I'm applying 7BB, and then after I finish applying 7BB, I'm going to run the 9BB through her mids and her ends, and let her process for 25 minutes, then rinse her out, and we'll be back. Okay, so now that I'm down to the last formula, this is 9BB. I don't mind full concentration of the pigment. I didn't add any clear to this formula, because I want maximum dye load deposit. Yes, it's gonna go deeper, but that's exactly what I want. And it's hard to explain because a lot of times when people lighten hair, they want it to be obviously like, ooh, black and white and super light. But the thing is you override to bring down so then it's muted and controlled and that's the desired tone. So many people with natural dark hair want to achieve, but it's hard to achieve. It's gonna look so gorgeous when you see it and there's gonna be so much dimension. And make sure you process for 25 full minutes for maximum color deposit. Now, if you want less dye load, you can add crystal clear to it so the color doesn't look as deep. But for me, the more pigment, the better. Even though it will appear deeper, it's gonna last way longer and it's gonna look more lush. Final result from Mel's hair. I'm obsessed. Yes, oh my goodness. Uh. <laughs> well, we took the past of the 90s with the chunky money pieces, brought it back, modernized it, making it more diffused around the hairline, the face. As you can see, it pops. And then when she turns to the side, you get that darkness through the back, but you still see the highlight shimmer through. You get that ombre from deep within, right down through here, but you still see the depth from inside that nape area. That depth ensures that it hugs and outline and contour her jaw. Line, so she doesn't look washed out, but she gets to really bring out her length while the color harm 
harmonizes with her natural level 3-4 base. The thing is that when you over highlight the hair and it's too white, like level 10, 11, 12 next to a dark base, it's going to look like tiger stripes. So you almost have to marry the color together so it looks like chocolate mocha latte. Yes, and that's why you get the blonde highlights here, but it harmonizes and not like a zebra. <laughs> no, nothing. But her hair is healthy yes. and I am obsessed. Anyway, quick thumbs up, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter yes. and download my music on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon, everywhere you consume music. And definitely purchase all the colors you see here on uh, mydandycolor.com or Armstrong, McCall, and Cosmo Prof stores. All right, talk to you guys soon. Bye bye. My pain is my pain.